channel. My name is McKenna, and today I'm going to be doing the chronic illness tag. I'm going to leave the questions down below in case anyone else wants to do it too. So we'll just jump right into it. The first question is, what are you diagnosed with? I have rheumatoid disease, that's the first and main one. And because of that, I have secondary heart issues, always referred to as supraventricular tachycardia, SVT. I have dermographism. And I have, um, why am I snorkeling? I got brain fog right now. Eczema. And there's a few others, but those are the main things. Number two is what do you tend to do at night when you can't sleep? Usually, I, it depends. Because first I start by watching a show to see if I can fall back asleep. But if that doesn't work, then sometimes I browse the internet. It just kind of depends what I'm, how I'm feeling. And if I can't stand to like stay laying down, I'll just get up and try to do something. Really, anything. Number three, what's the worst experience or side effect you've had from a medication? Most of you might have remembered from Instagram, but the worst side effect that I've had from medication is like these the scratch all over it was hives but it was even worse than hives they broke the skin broke and they would bleed everywhere it was so bizarre and that was caused from antihistamines like benadryl and allegra and things like that it lasted for over a year or two before we found out what was really the problem to fix it because the doctors didn't think that was the problem causing it so they were treating it with more and more antihistamines so number four how has your condition impacted your mental health i think everyone kind of struggles with it to some degree because it literally flips your life upside down like you're living one life and then one day you literally wake up for some of us at least some people are born you know with chronic illnesses but for some of us one day you literally just wake up and you're sick and it's horrible it's a whole different lifestyle everything changes the way you shower changes the way you sleep the way you do everything work your social life, literally every little thing, how you eat your food even, it's ridiculous. So I'd say that it's a struggle. And every day's got its challenges, but I'm so determined that it doesn't even matter. I mean, it does, but it's kind of on the back of my mind not really something I really focus on number five describe your social life I do still have a social life I have some very good friends and I'm extremely grateful for them and they've stuck by my side since I've gotten sick and there's only a handful of them but that's all I need really and I've met a lot of great people on social media as well that are chronically ill and that's been helpful as well because you know you don't get it till you get it so that's been nice and i go out and do things still it's just i have to do different things like i don't go out drinking but i can go out to the movies or shopping or go out to eat there's so many different things that i can do and so I focus on that and not what I can't do. And I'm not really all that bothered by not being able to drink, to be honest. So it's all right. I mean, I, when I first became chronically ill, it, social my social life was more absent. Everyone just disappeared because as soon as I became sick, they didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to do. And it kind of just scared them away. So... It was awkward at first, but you know, now I see who my true friends are and who I want to be surrounded by. So, number six, what's the hardest thing to do when you're flaring? Everything. 
literally everything. But I'd say for me it's showering and going up and down stairs. Those are the two hardest things. And I'm gonna admit that like I struggled to turn on the faucet in the shower. To pull it out, to turn it on, is barely doable. But I'm gonna keep doing it until basically I can't do it and then I'll have someone else do it. Or buy a new one. <laughs> Let's see. Number seven, do you have worries for the future? I think everyone has worries for the future, even if you're not chronically ill, but being chronically ill, it feels like you have double the worries. Like, what are you going to do for work and money, and where are you going to live, and are you going to have kids or not? There's so many different things to consider that are just different for us. Let's see here. Number eight. Favorite comfort food. I'd say pasta, but I also really like desserts like pie and donuts. So maybe all of those. That works. Yeah, that's good. Number nine. Tell us a valuable lesson you've learned from being sick. To really sit back and watch people and see what their true intentions are and just take in life for what it is and pay attention to all the small things like when you go outside look at the flowers and admire the sky take the time to enjoy all those things because you don't want to take them for granted let's see here Ten, name three three hints you missed that were oh name three things that you missed that were taken from you because of your illness I was like what, what's going on here because right here it says hints but things three things um I miss being able to work as much as I want. I miss being able to, um, let's see. Work out and do physical things like play sports or go for jogs or anything even riding bikes I can't ride bikes because it hurts my knees too bad like there's a lot of things that I would do if I wasn't chronically ill let's see number three I miss not having to take so many medications that's something I really don't enjoy and seeing all the pills that you really take in a week really just doesn't make you feel good about the whole thing but I mean it is what it is and you have to pick your poison it's you don't take anything at all and the disease progresses pro, progresses or you take the medicines and hope that those medicines do slow it down and for me, Embril did work for a long time, so I'm going to stick to taking the medicines and hope that this one works too. Number 11. How old were you when you first started experiencing symptoms? I was 19. I literally woke up one day and was just sick. First, I had the flu at the beach beginning of the month in August of 2014 and that lasted about a week and then I was you know pretty healthy for two weeks and then I had gotten parvovirus B19 and strep throat at the same time by the way the parvovirus B19 is the human form not the dog 
and because I had both of those together, that is what triggered my rheumatoid disease. And that's how I became chronically ill. So 19. I'm 23 now, by the way. So it's been almost four years. Once the summer's over, it's four years. And number 12, tell us three things people say that get to you. The number one thing is, I think you like being sick. Who says that? Like honestly, who in their right mind says that? That's so ignorant and just straight up rude. Like let me give you the flu and kick you in the knees a few times and let me say you like it. Like that's... I'm just gonna stop talking about it because it's gonna irritate me. And I hate when people say you don't look sick, you look fine. And I also hate when people say, oh, I have arthritis too. I have that in my finger. Like, I have rheumatoid arthritis. That's big difference. That's why we call it rheumatoid disease because arthritis is just one symptom. Though it's a big symptom, it's only one symptom. Rheumatoid disease affects your entire body, your eyeballs, your mouth, everything your organs like i said my heart's affected so it, it's just really obnoxious and then people being like oh well i'm sick too your cold is not a chronic illness and that is all 12 questions for the chronic illness tag so i'm gonna make sure i leave the questions down below for anybody else that wants to do it and if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, comment down below what you'd like to see. Bye guys.